tuning in again today. And you know what? Right now I'm drinking some Gekka Kaiken. The finest sake. So anyways, let's get straight to it. Today, I want to talk about heartbreak. You know, right now there's so many people with broken hearts and so many people that have been, you know, discarded, dumped, thrown away, kicked to the side, especially during this time that we're going through in this country. And personally, you know what? I don't care what time it is right now because, you know, yes, we're going through a pandemic right now. But it seems like there is really not ever a good time to go through a heartbreak. Never, ever. Because it is one of the most painful experiences that you would ever go through. I went through a heartbreak. I have gone through stages in my life. Different stages of pain. And one of those pain was heartbreak. And it's not fun at all. And you know what? For those of y'all that got a drink nearby, just go ahead and take a sip because you know what? We're going to need it. So, those of you that are loyal fans and that know about me, and for those of you that do not know about me, I have been divorced twice. And you can say, yeah, why in the world is she talking to me and she's been divorced twice? But you know what? Everybody learns from experience. Some of the most successful people on this earth, they could not tell you about how they became successful if they not, if they did not have the experience or the experiences that they have gone through. The only reason why they're able to tell you about their life now is because they had an, an experience. So that's where I'm going to start right now. Experiences. And this is why I'm able to talk to you is because I have gone through these experiences. Now it will be a Totally different story if I've gone through these experiences and I didn't learn anything. And I'm just repeating the same old thing, which a lot of us do that. I've done that a lot of times in my life. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. I do not expect people to be perfect. And that's one thing I have to learn because you think, oh, yeah, I'm going to meet this person. He's going to be my other half. No. You need to be 100% when you go into anything. So jumping back to my situation, I got married very early. Um, I married my first, um, the guy who I was in a relationship, my first relationship, I married him. And um, it, it, things changed over time. And then we just divorced. And I, I basically said, I didn't want to be married anymore. He just went along with it. And there was no fight for it. It was just like, oh, okay. And there was a lot of things behind that. And you know why it went that way it was a lot of things that were done that wasn't necessarily right in my opinion and maybe for him too because you remember everybody has a story there's always two sides to a story so in my opinion 
things weren't going well for me. He did not have my best interest at heart, in my opinion. And sometimes you, you know, you realize that and you go through things and, you know, you have family members that tell you, oh, you don't need to do this. You don't need to do this. And we're so young and sometimes naive and we just go with the first thing that comes along and we're all happy because it's a new experience and we're excited for this new experience. And we're like, this is great. We're great for this new experience. And, you know, even, you know, um, even sexually, we're great for this new experience. We don't realize that something ain't big until we done saw something else. <laughs> All the whole while we were enjoying <laughs> this big, massive thing in our mind, but it really wasn't quite so massive, you know, compared to other things. So we learn through our experiences. We do. But you know what really broke me? What really broke me was my second marriage because I had already been through one marriage. I had a child with my first husband and you know what? It's okay. It's okay if something over there is trying to go off in my video. I'm going to keep going. But back to topic. I had been married before. I, it's almost like I have been there, done that, don't want it no more. You know, don't want to go through it no more. Don't want to experience it anymore. And so the second marriage, I said, whoever I married this time, and I, I put everything in it. I put my all and I made this commitment within my own self and said, I am never going to get divorced again. I'm never, I said, I'm going to fight. I'm going to do whatever it takes. But because I didn't know any better, you can only do whatever it takes for you. But when you're together with somebody in a relationship and there's another party involved, you can only speak for yourself. So as much as I did not want to experience the same thing that happened before, I can only speak for myself. I couldn't speak for him, my second husband. No matter how much I tried, how much I wanted to work, how much I said, you know what, I'm going to get it together. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to work on me. I'm going to do me and I'm going to do it to my best. Your word is only good for what you can control. I'm going to say it again. As a matter of fact, I'm going to sip on this gagakake. And you sip on what you're going to sip on. But your word is only as good as what you can control. So when we try to take our word and speak for somebody else, then we are already out of mind. We are already out of line because we cannot speak for anybody else, no matter how much we love them. We can give a life for him or her. But it would not speak for him or her. It would only speak for you. So if we understand that, no matter what we do, you giving your life won't speak for you. It won't speak for him or her. So once we realize that we can only speak for ourselves, no matter who is involved, if you think you got Mr. Perfect, that's already a mistake right there because ain't no Mr. Perfect. It ain't no um, Mrs. Right or Ms. Right. Is none of those. We can strive and I always strive to be, but I know that because we are flawed that will never be. So once we learn that our whole mindset and the way we go about things and the way we approach things will be totally different than just going in and like, oh, I'm looking for my other half. I'm looking for my better half. No, you need to be looking for your hundred. 
And I've said this before, if you're watching my videos, I believe that when you go into a relationship, you have to be 100%. If, you go, if you're going in there empty, if you're going in there needing anything, it will show. You will see red flags. You'll see red flags in your own self. A lot of times we go looking for red flags in the other person when we have red flags within our own self saying, hey, stop. Self, stop. Take the time. Self-reflect. Something in me is not right. Look at me. Take me to the doctor. But we we bypass that. We ignore it because we think we're good and we need somebody to come help fill that void. And if you're lonely, you think, oh, that's when I need somebody. But it's quite the opposite. It's actually the opposite. When you're lonely, that's the time when you need to take to self-reflect and dig deep in yourself to figure out why is it that you feel this way. Now, do not get me wrong. I'm not saying we don't need people and we don't need love and we're not supposed to socialize. But at the same time, before we do all of that, before we get to all of that, we have to be whole within ourselves. We have to be 100 within ourselves. And, you know, of course we want companionship. Of course we may want to mate. Of course we want to experience love. Of course we want to be loved and we want to give love. But first, we have to give love to who? Ourselves. Ourselves. So, it starts with us. So, in my journey, I was heartbroken. I I said I was going to fight, and I meant it. You know, I would have did anything for this person. And my second marriage got me. He didn't want it. He didn't want it. Neither did he fight for it. So, that goes back to my first point. I don't know if it's the first point, but one of my previous points and saying that no matter how strong your will is, it has nothing to do with the will of someone else's or the will of someone else. That's correct. Yeah. So no matter how strong your will is, it has nothing to do with the will of someone else. That has to be made up by that person. We can say, oh, you know what? I'm a strong, I'm a strong woman. I'm a strong man. You know, I can do it. I can, I can give my all. I can do it. And there's no way this person, this other person is going to resist. But yes, you can do all of that. But if the decision is left to the other person, they can say yay or they can say nay. So when we're doing that and we're going through all these emotions, we should only think about what we can do and not force our will on anybody else or think that we can control someone else's will. Because that's going to put us in a whole other situation and it's not going to be a positive situation. Because the moment that we start thinking that we can control, I don't know why this thing is flying around like that. But anyway, I'm not going to be distracted. I'm going to get back to it. So the moment that we think that we can control what someone else will say, will do, is the moment that we have deceived our own selves. We have set ourselves up for de uh, deception. We are creating a delusion. And I went through so much pain. When my ex-husband walked out that door, oh my gosh, I felt like someone had just sliced my chest down the middle, took all my insides out and said, hey, look at him. I got him right here. It's painful. I wanted to die. Real talk. I wanted to run away. I did not want to be where I was. 
it was painful. I thought about the memories we had created. I thought about everything we did. And what's difficult about that is that memory is precious. And what makes it painful is that we're trying to erase a memory in which we cannot. We cannot erase, erase a memory. You know what? Heartbreak would be much easier if we had the option to delete. You know how you can, somebody comment on your page and stuff. You'd be like, I don't, I don't feel like saying all of that. Delete. You know, like somebody posting on your page. I remember back in the day when Facebook was all uh, brand new kind of. And everybody just posting on your timeline. You're like, I ain't got time for that. What you posting this mess on my timeline for? Delete. You know, but Facebook has allowed us to get, you know, have those options to if we want people to post on our timeline. So if memory was that way in which we can say delete, you know what? Heartbreak would not be so painful. But because we cannot just simply press the delete button, it makes it that much harder. What's painful about divorce and breaking up, being dumped, discarded or whatever is because we have created memories of these things. And when we go through that point in which we have been divorced or broken up with, we don't want to remember. And it's painful because we remember those good things. Just imagine, for an example, if someone broke up with you and divorced you, but you didn't remember none of it. Guess what? You'll go about your day. You'll be like, what? <laughs> You'll be at the club party. You'll be talking to your best friends, your homies, your homegirls. And you'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Divorce? What? Oh, you know what? If it was, oh well. But because the memory is very important to us and that's something that we cannot erase, it makes it challenging for us to process. It makes it challenging. Uh, challenging. For us to move on because we're constantly in this battle of like moving on. I gotta move on, I gotta move on. But no, I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and you know what? When I'm saying that, I feel like there's a song that Michael Jackson sings. I remember. I don't know, but maybe I'm making up my own song. I remember. I don't know. But you remember. And because you remember, and you cannot forget, it's hard. And just think about when you need to forgive somebody. Forgiving somebody should be like as if that thing never happened. It's not that you forget. It's that you're going to count this incident or this instance as if it did not happen. And it's almost like you forgot but you didn't forget. And that's why people struggle with forgiveness <laughs> because there's a memory there that say, hey, you know what that person did that, so hold up now. Hey, did I make the horse noise practice? <laughs> hold your horses. That's what I'm trying to say, hold your horses. So when you have gone through that and you've experienced betrayal and you're like, oh, no, I'm going to forgive, I'm going to forgive. But there comes a time when something may trigger something in you where you remember that incident. And it's almost like you ain't forgiven. A lot of times you haven't forgiven. Majority of the time you haven't forgiven. I had to learn that. That's something I struggle with. I struggled with. And because you remember, you have to... You, it's something inside of you that has to say, you know what, I'm going to remember this, but you know what, I'm not going to hold it. I'm going to let it go. I'm not going to hold it against that person. I remember it, but it's like back there somewhere where, you know, I know this occurred to me. I know this happened to me, but I'm not going to hold it against. And that that is what makes forgiving so challenging for most people because there's a memory associated with it. Now, just imagine if we had to forgive somebody, but one moment we said we didn't, we forgave them, we forgot about it. Oh, it'd be so easy 
to move forward because you're like, no, I don't remember nothing. I don't remember anything. But memory is one of the most challenging things about moving on. And you can talk about fear. You can associate memory with fear. There's something in your mind that you remember most of the time that causes you to continue to be fearful. And it all has to do with your memory of something. It's good. So talking about memory, when my ex-husband walked out that door, I remember it clear as day as if when he walked out that door, it said Sophia Alexander. And you know what? I'm not going to forget my name. I remember the look on his face. I remember the expression. I remember the energy. I remember how my eldest daughter, who was probably three at the time, and my youngest daughter was probably one. Or just about to be one. She probably wasn't even one yet. I don't even think she was one, as a matter of fact. But she didn't know what was going on. But the eldest daughter, that's what she knew. She knew him. And to see her, see her mom in tears, to see her mom crying on the floor on her knees, she knew something was wrong. It's natural for us to feel other human beings to be empathetic and then be sympathetic so my daughter felt those things she asked me about this situation she said where is daddy going because this time it was different from him just walking out the door going to work this time i was crying on my knees heart broken so her three-year-old mind she probably was three and a half at the time something like that close to four yeah she was three and a half almost would have been four and said where is daddy going she never really asked me that before but this time it was different only because she remembered her memory said I don't ever remember seeing mommy act like this when daddy walks out the door. So let me ask. Memory is very important. And that's one of the main reasons why it is a challenge for us. If memory, if we can shut memory off just as much as people walk out on our lives, we will be okay. We wouldn't have to experience this. But you know what? When they do walk out on your life, this is an opportunity for you to grow. This is an opportunity for you to become self-aware. This is an opportunity for you to self-reflect and heal. So the next time that you do go in a relationship, you are 100. Because there's no point in going into a relationship. I've learned it now. When you are not 100 within yourself, it's basically asking for relationship failure. Is basically asking for to be that person that is needy, that always needs something, that's always arguing, that's always wanting attention, that's always wanting something, needing, not wanting, needing, feel like you need something all the time. And you know what? That becomes draining to the person that's fulfilled. It becomes draining to the person that's 100 within themselves. They're like, oh my gosh, why? Why does she need all of this? Why does she need this? But I went through a lot of phases when my ex-husband walked out. I went through a phase where I didn't even know I was depressed. 
Can you believe it? I had to find out by someone asking the question to my brother. I had to find out that way because I was the person like, oh, I never be depressed. I don't know what's up with all these depressed people walking around. They don't know how to get it together. I'm never, ever going to go through that. You know why? Because I didn't see myself going through that. And I was just like, I'm too good to go through depression. I know how to be sad and heal. I know how to be sad and pick back up. And you know what? I'm I'm normally, usually a person that picks back up just like this. I'm always ready. That's my nickname, ready. You ask me, huh? When? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> actually, son, I'm like, when? <laughs> I'm not talking about, let me think about it. I'm like, when? I'm ready. So, with all of that said, We have to be 100. We can't go anything unfulfilled. It's time for us to self-reflect. I cried. I was depressed. I found out that my brother asked me a question that his friend said because of my actions. I took the time to self-reflect. At least I had, you know, common enough sense to self-reflect and say, hold up. Why is he asking this? He must see something. What is he saying? That's when I chose to self-reflect and say, you know what? Let me look into myself. And guess what? Everything said that I was depressed. I could not deny it. I could not deny it. Uh-oh. Ready was not even ready no more. And that was a sign for me along with other things. I went through the point where you talk to people and you look forward to talking to people only so you can just talk about how sad you were, how sad I was, how I was done wrong and what I can do now, what I can go through, what I can hope for. There was a point where I didn't even have no hope, but I had to think about all these things my two daughters young daughters if i had given up like that how much heartbreak would they have to go through how much pain how devastating that would be for them to say oh my mom checked out when I was three, when I was one, that would rob them of the life that they should have had. And I'm no thief. I had to realize that I had to question myself. And, you know, when you're going through a heartbreak, you do think so many questions come over your mind. You're so consumed. You're consumed about what he's doing, he, she doing. What are they doing right now? Why would they do this? I am the victim. And that's one thing I had to learn was that eventually I realized that I had set myself up to become the victim all along. Why was this done to me? Why did this happen to me? I didn't deserve it. It only happened to me. I am the result of this. No. That, you know, I became aware of that through self-reflection. All of these things, looking deeply inside of myself. Why am I not fulfilled? Why am I not 100? But it was horrible. Because then, you're thinking about when the separation happened. So, my ex-husband, we, he, we, we, he, we, we, he, he, <laughs> he said that, yeah. No, that's not his voice. Oh, yeah. We're separating. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we're separating? Yeah. I hope we can get back together sometime. I hope so. 
that was me and him. That's what he said. And now looking back over it, I think that that was never his intention, you know. It was never his intention. And you know why I know that? Because actions speak louder. Actions beat words any day. And you know what? I put that on my daddy. I put that on my daddy. I put that on my daddy. So anyway, if that, if actions beat words any day. So let's look at what his actions were saying. Was his actions over there with me? Hell no. Was his dick over there with me? Hell no. It came back at some point. Because pussy is just good. He's a little like, you know what? <laughs> I can't go too far with him. I'm going to try to get it. I'm going to come back around if it's good. It's going to come back around. So, but don't mistake that for love. Because that's one of the things that I did was I'm a him wanting to come back and hit this good ninja for love. I thought he was talking about, you know what? I love you, girl. Like he over there hitting it and pounding <laughs> as fast as he can. I'm like, oh, he loved me. He loved me. But guess what? He can come over there and pound you real good. It ain't got nothing to do with love. And you know what? That's through experience. And I'm telling you, real talk, if you want to know the truth, I'm telling you the truth, that anybody can come over and have sex with you. They can with <laughs> you and say, I'm going to come over there and make love to you. It ain't making love until their actions Speak louder than what they saying. If you can get up, get him over there to do what he talking about, she talking about, then that's when it matters. But until then, it does not matter. You can find good people all over the world. It's billions of people on this earth. And I'm pretty sure but, but, you just had, the, you just had, ain't the best. It probably could be close to it. Or it could be the best. You know what? But guess what? If the actions do not line up with the stuff that they come out, they saying out of their mouth, then you know what? It don't matter. Actions be words any day. And I put that on my dad. And so we have to realize that because we can get so caught up in the entanglement, as Jada put it. <laughs> I got entangled with him. And I, I love that word because I'm like, wow, that was some good entanglement. <laughs> For you to get entangled with somebody, it's some good ass entanglement. So you can get entangled with somebody. And you can be tangled up all oh, whichever way, your legs this way, his legs that way. You know what? You all look like this. I don't care how it is. However you choose to be entangled. I love that word. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Entangled. Now I'm going to go around saying entangled. I was entangled with <laughs> And that's another thing that I'm going to talk about later because you can get entangled with some good and it don't mean shit. Entangled with the good don't mean shit. So, we can become entangled, but we only become entangled when we allow ourselves and we set ourselves up to be entangled. So, going back to heartbreak and pain, We can get confused that we're thinking that, oh, the love is so good. The love and the sex is so good. He must love me the way that he's me. But I'm here to tell you otherwise. And I say this because 
I want to help. I am here to tell you about my experience in hopes that you don't have to go through the same thing. Let's just sip. Let's take a sip. You know what? Because this real talk. We all grown here. We are all grown here and we have gone through something. If you're watching my channel, you have gone through something. If you are watching my channel, you are you have gone through something. And so let's be real with it. We've gone through something and we're looking for an answer. So I want to tell you that heartbreak doesn't have to last as long as it does. We choose to. Throughout my depression, throughout my pain, my heartbreak, and not only that, to have kids involved is that much more harder. It makes it even more challenging because now, sometimes depending on the person that you're with, that person may want to act funny with you. They may want to cause all types of pain. But guess what? I didn't do that. I said, you know what? No matter how this person is, how he chooses to act, I'm going to be the loving mom. I'm going to be the loving person that's never, ever going to stand in between my daughters and their fathers. I'm never ever going to do that. I'm never, that's why I have a good relationship a a communicating relationship with my exes now there was an opportunity for me to act a plum fool and i have to tell you again i'm from louisiana i'm from louisiana from the south that dirty south you don't think this mouth can't get dirty I could act the fool. Matter of fact, both sides of my family were known. My mom and my dad's side was known for acting a fool when you needed to. I don't know past my mom on her side, but at least she was quiet, classy, preservative, sophisticated, beautiful. But when it came down to it, she'll let you know. And my dad, they were the opposite. Not saying they ain't had no class to them, but they had no problem in that time to let you know. I could have acted a plum fool with my ex. I could have acted a fool, gave him hell. We have no problem. I have no problem. I had no problem, but because... I chose to be different. I made up in my mind that, you know what? Enough with the foolishness. Enough with the getting people told all the time, telling people off, ready. My nickname still is ready, but it's a different kind of ready. It's like, are you ready to go travel? Are you ready to go abroad? Are you ready to go shopping? Are you ready to go dine at this very nice restaurant? Yes. But if you're ready to act a fool, hell no. My name ain't that no more. And I stopped that in my early 20s. So it's a different kind of ready. <laughs> it's the same ready, but it's ready for different things. So we have to know that in this break of time, there may be a time when your ex may come back and want to get the goods of the magic stick. <laughs> but we have to, we, we don't need to confuse that, which I did. I was like, oh yeah, you know what? He if we might be getting back together. We he might love me, but that wasn't true. It only depends on your case. And if your case shows your action then that's something to consider. But when it's on the top, then you need to walk. <laughs> you need to walk. So, it was painful. It was very painful. I wanted to run away. And then not only that, I had to 
sacrifice to make ends meet. Sacrifice is never easy. I don't care what kind of sacrifice you put up. If it's a sacrifice, it is not easy. It's always going to take something else within you to go through with it. But whatever your reason is, you, you choose to do it, you do it. So, with all the heartbreak that I experienced, I was torn, I was broken. I was in denial. I didn't want to accept I'm like, oh yeah, he loves me. He's just going through the phase. Because he ain't going through no phase. We need to stop telling ourselves that and trying to stick up for people when we should not. We should be sticking up for our own self. Am I going through a phase? Yes, I'm going through a phase. I'm in denial. <laughs> That's my phase. <laughs> That's my phase I'm going through. This is not going through a phase. Well, he could be, but it's not your phase to worry about. The phase that you need to be worried about is yourself, your healing, your growth, your self-awareness. How can I move on to my healing? It does not, I hear everybody say, oh, it takes time. You know what? Let's just pick up your glasses and drink. It only takes time if you allow it to take time. People are like, oh, just wait after six, seven months, you'll be done. Or you can let six, seven months pass by. But if you never address the issue, guess what? Yeah. Six, seven months gonna pass by. And guess what? You're gonna still be in pain. I know people to this day that say, I'm still hurting after two, three, four years, five, six, seven years, they're still hurting. Because they never dealt with the pain. You have to deal with it. You have to address it. And as a matter of fact, we should never let ourselves get to that point where we are affected by someone breaking up with us or a relationship ending to the point that we do not want to live. That we do not want to go on. That we cannot see ourselves with someone else. Just as Susie or Bob came into your life, they can walk out of it. And guess what? There's so many Susie and Bob, you can meet another one. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Just as Susie or Bob left out of your life, you know, if I need to say it a different way, just as Shanequa Shanika, Taquisha, Tyrone, Tyreek, Tyrell left out of your life. There's another one. There's another Shaniqua, Taquisha, Tyrone, Tyreek, whatever. There's another one. You know what? It might be the one you just had. So you might be the one that's missing out on some good hay. <laughs> some good hay. And you know what? That good hay is good. <laughs> but if you never get past it, you won't know that there might be some good or better hay. So it's up to you to make up your mind. And everything starts with your mind. That's the bottom line. So, everything starts with your mind. How you see yourself, how you see yourself getting over it, how you see yourself moving forward. So, if you think, oh my gosh, this is going to take so long. Oh my gosh, I'm never going to get over it. Guess what? You're right. Absolutely. Absolutamente. You are right. You won't get over it in time because your mind has already set the expectations of how you will approach a situation. Your mind has already set the expectation of how you will approach the situation. So if I see myself, I always have to bring out, bring up Beyonce. I love Beyonce because Beyonce... 
not only can she sing, not only can she dance, but she did it. You know, I almost want to get up and just dance. You don't do that Beyonce dance. But I'm not going to do it right now. Because she set her mind. A girl from Houston, Texas, which is a beautiful place. I love Houston. Came from where she came from. And now she is one of the top most spoken of artists in the world. Everybody knows Beyonce. I can go to China. Everybody knows Beyonce. Matter of fact, I went to China and they was taking pictures of me like I was Beyonce. I was like, <laughs> yes. It was a line. But anyway, so people know she did what it took and if she can start from wherever she started from, wherever it may be for her, on her inside, she knows. She is the one that truly knows. And she got to where she is today. Guess what? I can bet you if you ask her, it started with her mind and what she told herself. If she had not thought she can be where she is today, if her mind told her, oh, no, I can never do this. Oh, no, I can never do that. Then guess what? She wouldn't be Beyonce that we know her as of today. She would be a totally different person. She'll probably see her on the street. I will go to some show that she's performing at. And, you know, she wouldn't be on the level that she would be at. I, that she she is right now actually that she is right now but because her mind did not limit her the physicality cannot limit her so everything starts with your mind so if you change your mind change your thoughts and say hey you know what I do not have to sit here and wallow in this I do not have to sit here and just take my time and hope that, oh, I think here, you know, I'll be better. If we never address the situation, it'll be, oh, after two more years, I'll be better. No. It'll, it'll continue. And you hear about these people that are continuously heartbroken. They can't, they can't get over it. Their mind just won't let them process. And it goes back to memory. Memory is what created in the mind. Mind memory. Two important things. Mind memory. <laughs> so whatever your mind chooses to remember, whether that is, I don't have to sit here for a year and be depressed. I do not have to sit here for a year and be heartbroken. I do not have to sit here for six months and be heartbroken. I do not have to sit here for six months and be in pain. What memory is your mind creating right now? What memory is your mind going to create? Hopefully is one that you want to remember. Hopefully is one that you want to remember. At the time that I was heartbroken and separated, I didn't know how I was gonna make ends meet. But when I thought about my girls, I was like, oh, it has to happen. I have to do what it takes. My mind set the course, my body put it in action. Drink to it. My mind set the course, my body put it in action. And that's what you need to do. Let your mind set the course. And it needs to be a positive course. <laughs> of course. And then let your body set the, set the action. Because your body will only go as far as your mind anticipates as your mind allows it to go. 
your body will only prepare for what your mind is already set up for it to prepare. So if you get that, if you get it, then that means you understand it. Then when you understand it, you can apply it. And you know what? This has already been a long video. This is probably one of my longest videos, but I'm passionate about this. For those of you that are watching, I'm passionate. Please let me know in your comments what you think about this video. What have you gone through? Share it with me. I would love to talk with you about it. I would love to do a video about it. And this is all because of you. You know why? Because you're so damn amazing. There. I said it. You are. And I hope you know that. And I hope you realize it. So if you want to hear more heartfelt videos talking about self-healing, self-growth, overcoming the, the things that we do go through in life, in life then like, subscribe. Leave your comments and you know what? I'm going to drink before I holler. It's Dr. Kaiken. It's on point. So, wherever they sell Gaka Kaiken, Gaka Kaiken in your area, try it. Leave your comments. Let me know how you like it. And guess what? Aha! I am drinking on what they call the finest sake gekakaiki. Thank you.